you know the material you need, you know what you need to purchase. So it's kick-started that job. You know exactly what's got to happen now through the sales and purchase order processing cycles. In today's Tech Corner, I'm here with Jeff from PSL Datatrack to talk about work orders. But before you watch this video, if you haven't watched a previous video on quotations, you really need to go back and watch it. So, Jeff, what is a work order? Okay, works order processes the incoming order from your customer. So it's a sales order. It's also going to deal with making for stock and selling from stock. So it encompasses all those commercial aspects of an order. So how so using PSL, how quick is it to create a works order? It takes seconds. What we're going to do, we'll take through an example. In the first example, we're going to process an order where we've got a delivery that's going to be spread across 12 different dates. So it's a yearly order. We'll take through all the steps to get that order processed. So what we've got here, so we're about to click new. We're going to select the customer from the list. We're then going to look at all the quotes available, put on the first order, select that quotation, customer order number goes in, date's been prompted, we'll accept it, and we save. We're now going to replicate that order. We're going to specify it's 11 times, spread a month apart. We'll confirm that we want this order to be processed, and you'll see the date will fly past as it generates 11 different works orders. And now we're going to look at the order book, and you'll see for this one customer alone, the spread of orders, which will show all 12 deliveries. That's all well and good if you've got 12 orders that are all the same, but what happens if you've got a mixed batch of orders? Uh, well, we'll take you through an example of that where we've actually quoted a range of different parts, different batch sizes, but the customer orders them all. We'll see how that works. So we'll select the customer's account reference. We then get a chance to change contact if necessary and select the inquiry reference that will then show us all the parts that are on that quotation. You can select one, some, or all of them. Enter the customer's purchase order number. You can then specify the date you'd like these orders due by. We'll simulate. It will tell us what the order is going to be and the value. If you're happy, it matches. Generate, and that's the orders raised. And there's the order acknowledgement. That's in a few seconds. It's just so quick and so easy. Well, I say so easy, but obviously, <laughs> if you've been running this software quite a while. Now, obviously, we've gone through, we've created the work orders for 12 of the same part, 12 of different parts. But how does that help with shop floor documentations? So the works order, because the works order is based on a quotation that gives you all the details that a job card needs, you can print the process layout straight away. You know the material you need, you know what you need to purchase. So it's kick-started that job. You know exactly what's got to happen now through the sales and purchase order processing cycles. Now, that's all well and good for one order. But what happens if you've got a group of orders? How does a system deal with that? Okay, so if you put on a range of different parts, typically you have a common customer's purchase order number. But how do you see those jobs being linked? We do it with a generation number. So you can see a number with, with a decimal counter on the end. So you can see it's part one, part two, part three of a series of orders. Jeff, that was such a detailed description and it's great to actually see you do these work orders on screen. If you haven't watched the video before this, it's on quotations, which is in our series from Jeff and PSL. Join us next time when we go from work orders to scheduling.